Hey guys, my name is Ryan and welcome to Overwatch Central. So today I want to talk about performance-based SR. One of the main things that I think players complain about and blame for the current state of competitive Overwatch. The idea that a player that's playing maybe Torbjorn only could have a 40% win rate, but because of how the performance system may or may not work, we're not necessarily sure on that, I'll say that off the bat. It's a system that has been kept very quiet by Blizzard. That you see players with these kind of win rates actually being able to climb because of performance-based SR. In this video, I want to refer to two articles, if you will, and kind of dispel some misconceptions going on, and also provide some good ideas and recommendations on how to fix this system. One was written by a Korean pro with a lot of tips and suggestions to change Overwatch's competitive state and what he would do, but also I want to look at an article written by a Master of Analytics, Eriquez X on the competitive subreddit. I'm not gonna read it all, it's fairly lengthy. I would suggest reading it yourself. I'll put it in the description below. But the bit that I really wanna highlight is, can't we just change the SR system to win and loss, meaning that there's no form of progression of, if you play well, you gain more SR than you lose? And the short answer is no, simply because it won't solve anything. And he gives the example of a bronze team playing a platinum team, and if they won, they would still gain the same amount because it's a fixed win-loss rate. They would get the same amount of SR as the Plat team would if they beat the Bronze team. Now, of course, this shouldn't really happen. I know the matchmaking is a little bit screwy, but that's certainly not going to be something that would happen anyway. So now, hopefully, you're starting to see. If the Bronze team beats the Platinum team, then they should gain more SR because they are the underdogs. And they should gain more SR because of it. And that's essentially what the rest of this article goes on to saying, with the recommendations coming from this user being making the team result count more than the performance-based SR. The performance-based SR should be in the game, but should be minimal not as big as it is now say you might get 10 extra points for playing really well where he's suggesting it should be three to five and honestly at that level i would say that it's just pointless to have it in if it's just going to be micro even then that's more of enough for people to still keep to one tricking on doing that if it gains them five more sr each time that they play well and they lose five less sr every time that they lose but i really want to emphasize the bit on team results counting more than performance based sr because i really do agree on it the only time that you see the average sr of your team and the enemy's team is right at the start of a match when the names come in. I think more of an emphasis should be put on this, that you can tab and you can see the different SR averages on both sides, so you know whether you are the underdog or whether you are the higher SR team. And that should be the real emphasis there. Gaining more SR should be a thing if you're playing against a team that's a lot better when it comes to SR levels. I don't necessarily think it's going to backfire with teams going, oh, they have a higher SR than us, GG, we lose, we don't lose much anyway. And I don't necessarily think there's going to be as many problems with smurfing as some may think, so I would like to see an emphasis is put on a team's overall SR rather than an individual's when it comes to performance base. Now I want to take a statement from the Korean tag player Modern who wrote a very long almost essay to Blizzard about the stuff that he would change. But he goes on about his experiences, how solo queue was a very negative state for him. He would always be one of the highest players in his team and he'd be put, say he's 4.6, 4.7k rated. He would be put with players at 4.1, 4.2 and that would be really frustrating for him because he wants to play with people at his level instead of almost taking this babysitting approach with helping his team and shot calling for them. He then started playing in a group, and this is a video that I also want to do down the line as well, where his group of three could play and and carry essentially but also their games would be against better people and overall the games would be a lot better to play as opposed to a stomp either side. He also talks about being number one in Korea has absolutely no meaning because you could always abuse the system and raise your SR much quicker through grouping and that kind of thing. He says that when he plays in a group, he's not satisfied, but overall he does give a really solid bit of advice. He's a 4.6k player and he simply shouldn't be playing with 4.1 players. I know that's the SR average and I think it's fine to queue with people like that. He has a pretty good solution that may work and the solution is making sure that all 12 players are in 150 SR SR from one another. Players with a higher SR don't mind waiting extra amount of time to make sure they have a balanced game. So he's quite happy to wait for the players in 4.4 and 4.5 to get into his game, meaning that they're a lot more highly competitive and a lot more balanced. Essentially removing the idea that if you're a 4.5k player, you will be playing with people that are as low as 4k. And the same would be if you're a 3k player in Platinum Diamond, you won't be playing with somebody all the way down to sort of Gold Platinum level. 500 SI is the difference between tiers. And there's a big difference to somebody that is in Low Diamond, High Platinum, to somebody that's in Low Platinum, High Gold. So I think this is a really good idea just to sort of shrink the SR differences of player to 150 when they're solo queuing and when they're trying to group as well. It might be a bit awkward 
with grouping a bit more awkward to start out. But I do think that these two things are major when it comes to making the competitive experience a lot better. Putting more emphasis on a team's average SR, but also making sure that players can't beat 150 SR different from their own skill rating. But that's it for this time. Thank you very much for watching. Do you think that these changes would actually help competitive? Would it make a difference? Let us know in the comments below whether you agree or disagree, and also leave your own suggestions as well below. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, really helps out the channel. And until next time, take care. We'll see you then.